Screens of death, scary stuff. Doesn't matter if it's blue, black, or gray. No one wants to experience a screen of death. The good news though, is that we here at My Computer Works have a couple of troubleshooting tips to help you out in the event that you experience one of these terrifying screens, okay? Now the most infamous of all is the blue screen of death. That's the one that most people will experience if they've ever had their system crash on them and get an air screen, right? Usually goes blue with like an air of some sort. If you haven't experienced that, I hope you don't, but if you have, this is why. Could be hardware issue, unfortunately. We'll start right off the bat with kind of the, the worst one. It could be hardware issue. Something inside the computer failed, right? That's not good because that means you need to replace that computer part inside or replace the computer altogether, and that's not going to be fun. Now, it might be something a little simpler or not as catastrophic, right? It might be something like a driver issue. Now, we all know we have drivers that run the hardware and the peripherals in our system, right? That we plug into our system. Those could go corrupt. Those drivers could go corrupt. Those are files on the computer. It is prone to failure. Nothing's perfect. So the drivers for something in your computer could go completely haywire, bonkers, and cause the blue screen of death. In addition, the operating system itself, so Windows, a file within the Windows operating system could go corrupt. That happens, your entire system will go haywire, bonkers won't boot up, right? So like you'll try to boot up Windows and it just won't, you'll hit that blue screen of, uh, of death and it'll kick you back. Now, it could be a number of other hardware and software issues, but those are kind of the most common ones and also kind of obvious, right? Like hardware failure could have the corrupt operating system. So troubleshooting, pretty simple. What you might want to do first is just reboot. Again, computers are not perfect. Something might just have not launched, right? The sauce might not have been right, wrong ingredient, okay? That's fine. Just reboot the system. Usually it'll keep going. It'll be okay. I hope that's all it is because beyond that, you've got to get a little complicated. Um, you might need to run like DISM plus SFC scan. We talked about that uh, a couple couple videos ago, the disk image scan, right? So, and the, and the system file checker. These are tools built into the Windows operating system that scan and check for issues and then repair them if needed. You might need to consider doing a massive malware scan on your system because it's very possible that, your, uh, that you have a malware that made its way on your system and that's what's causing all these issues. You might need to update your drivers or uninstall old drivers and, and make sure you have the newest ones. Um, sometimes even if you have the newest ones, one could have gone bonkers. Check that from device manager or do a system scan, whatever, and you might be able to, to fix those issues. Um, sometimes it doesn't hurt to just reinstall all your drivers, chipset, things like that. And then reOS, right? Reinstalling Windows operating system. Kind of mentioned that we, we would want to do that. Uh, in addition to those other things. So that's that's the blue screen of death. Let's talk about the gray screen of death. Now this one uh, occurs on Mac a lot of times. It, it can also be due to hardware failing in the system, uh, but it could also be a failed Mac update that went in. So again, just like Windows operating system, Mac, ha you have the ability to reinstall your operating system if needed. You might wanna think about doing that. Yes, there can be data loss if you do this. So if you absolutely cannot lose data on your system, I'm gonna take right here to mention, always make sure you have a backup before you go doing re-OS re or anything like that. I don't want anybody to hear this video and think that reinstalling your operating system will always keep all your files. That's not the case, everybody. Sometimes you lose stuff. So if you have to re-OS, expect that you could lose data, okay? Now with the black screen of death, this one's a little bit trickier, okay? Because you can't always tell what it is. They don't always give you an error code. Usually the screen is just black. This could interrupt, uh, indicate corrupt operating system files, like I mentioned before. Could be looser damaged cables to the system, especially related to like display. And then your GPU could be failing or the drivers for your GPU could be corrupt. That's uh, a lot of times the cause for the black screen of death. But what I wanna do is give you something really useful, right? Uh, a lot of my advice would not be very useful if you can't get your system started or you can't boot up, right? Or if like these issues are preventing you from doing anything on the computer. So now if you can get it booted up, awesome. Do everything I said, scan malware, you know, reinstall your drivers, update everything, all that jazz, do all that stuff. But if you can't get it started, what we need to do is we need to get you to Windows recovery environment. And this is something we haven't really talked about too much. This is something that was built into the Windows operating system 
by Microsoft. They knew that there would be issues with the system if, you know, in the future, computers aren't perfect. They wanted to leave technicians and users like you at home a way to be able to fix those issues without fully booting the operating system. So that's what the Windows recovery environment is. Typically, you get there by you want your machine completely off. You turn it on and you tap F11 really fast or you reboot the system and you tap F11 while it's starting up. I mean, you go crazy um, and, and it takes you into the Windows recovery environment. So for some systems, if you know, HP, Lenovo, F11 is pretty universal, but for some of the other manufacturers out there, it might be a different F key. Uh, but F11 is pretty universal. If you tap that, bah, 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 you get to the Windows recovery environment, you're going to get options like these ones, troubleshooting, using the command prompt, right? So like if we want to do a DISM plus SFC scan, but we can't get the computer to start up, we would do it here from the Windows recovery environment in the command. We just hit command prompt and would open a command prompt for us to be able to put commands in. In addition, you can reinstall Windows from here, which is pretty huge. That's a tool we use here a lot, you know, when, when things are just bleak and we can't, uh, can't resolve the issue, can't get this, you know, something is completely bonkers on the system, might have to go in here and do a reinstall of the operating system. And sometimes it lets you keep your files so you don't lose everything, which is pretty nice. But that's not always the case. Uh, but you do have a lot of options from here that you wouldn't have if you couldn't get into the operating system. So I hope that helps everyone. If it did, or you're having trouble with it, because it can get confusing and kind of hard. Make sure to call us numbers down in the bottom beginning into the video. We'd love to hear from you. And please, while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe. And we'll see everyone on the next one.